Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today, my guest is from Xyrotex. We have the VP of Product Management, Larry Jones. Larry, welcome to the show today. Oh, thanks, Rich. Good morning. Well, thanks for coming on, Larry. Uh, um, what I thought we'd do today is let's go through your slides quick, and then uh, we'll do a Q&A at the end. Great. Uh, Xyrotex is announcing a new version of our cluster store product the uh, Cluster Store 9000. And so we're here to really talk about how we're expanding the product line, and it's really intended to improve uh, HPC productivity. And how do we do that? It's mainly by increasing the speed of the storage system, the reliability, and the efficiency of the storage system. And I'll touch on a couple of those things, in fact, starting on the next slide. So. Uh, for those of you who don't closely follow Xyrotex and Cluster Store, I wanted to start with just some quick facts. Uh, first, uh, we were the first to deliver a uh, storage system that exceeded a terabyte a second, uh, together with our partners at Cray, for uh, NCSA at the Blue Waters system. Uh, a second bullet that you may not know is that uh, we have the lowest uh, disk failure rate in the industry. In fact, uh, between all the divisions of Xyrotex, uh, we delivered over four exabytes of storage uh, across all of those divisions. And when we look at the failure rate, in other words, the drives returned, uh, it's at 0.3% fa uh, annual failure rate. And that is really uh, as compared to the industry standard of about 1%. So it's about a third of the industry standard. And compared to some of our competitors who talk about seeing a 3% annual failure rate, uh, that's really 10 times higher than what we deliver. So Xyrotex is very focused on delivering systems that are highly reliable. But reliability isn't enough. You also need to get efficiency. In that uh, uh, Blue Water system with over 14,000 disks, uh, each one of those disks is delivering at uh, an average of 94 megabytes a second. So that's great, but why would you actually care? The answer is really that it means that you need an awful lot less uh, storage system to deliver that kind of performance. In fact, as compared to other uh, terabyte per second storage environments out there, we're delivering the same uh, performance with a third less in terms of uh, the number of racks uh, which translates immediately into power, cooling, and above all, cost uh, than systems that other folks are building. So those are just some facts that you might not know, but now what we're doing is raising the bar. With the Cluster Store 9000, we're going to make the system even faster, more reliable, and more efficient. So maybe we could touch on uh, the next slide which talks about the product family overall. The CS9000 that we're announcing today will be deliverable in the first half of the year. Um, it is 50% faster and drives uh, more efficiency because of that, meaning you need even fewer uh, disk drives, uh, storage systems, and racks to deliver the same amount of performance, which turns into lower cost and higher efficiency uh, for your storage system, and in turn for your compute cluster. So keeping that compute cluster busy is the uh, job of our storage system. So the CS9000 joins uh, our product family, uh, including the CS6000, which is what is deployed now at Blue Waters, but also the 1500, which we delivered in the first half of the year, and uh, has been uh, a big success and is enjoying, uh, enjoying wide popularity among uh, users looking for really mid-range requirements, delivering in six rack units uh, a gigabyte and a half per second. Uh, and it expands linearly to let uh, departments and other mid-range users uh, go from that gigabyte and a half on a luster system up as large as they care to scale. But let's uh, move into more specifics on the uh, CS9000 itself on the next slide, where I want to introduce uh, one of the major highlights. Uh, and there's a whole long list of uh, feature upgrades and capabilities that I won't take you through, but this one's pretty interesting. Uh, and it's uh, 
our cluster store grid raid. This is a major enhancement to RAID. It's a fully declustered version of RAID um, and a big enhancement to the system overall. So first, as I told you, it's important to cut drive failures to start with, and we deliver the most reliable drives in the industry to begin with. But then drives fail. And so the issue is how quickly can you recover from a failed drive? And what we're able to do with uh, Grid Raid is improve the recovery time by 4x. In other words, it takes us one quarter of the time to get that system back up and running. And we do that uh, by taking RAID, which is typically a more serial operation in traditional environments, and we apply HPC tactics to it. In other words, we're running RAID in parallel. And that's what allows us to get the massive increase in uh, rebuild performance. And why that matters is that it gets your system back out of degraded mode and back up to full speed so that your compute cluster, instead of waiting for the system uh, because part of the system is in degraded mode, uh, it now is running at full speed and you're getting full utilization out of your compute cluster and the applications that uh, you intend to run. Uh, so this is pretty important today with four terabyte drives being the standard out there. But as we look into 2014, you're looking at five and six terabyte drives and beyond. Uh, so drives that can today take 12, 14, 16 hours, as you look into five and six terabyte drives on the horizon, you're talking uh, over a day to get a drive rebuilt. All that time, your system is in degraded mode. With cluster store grid raid, it's really about getting that uh, system rebuilt and back into action at full speed as quickly as possible. So maybe I can move to the last slide here and just summarize uh, what we've done at cluster store and with the cluster store 9000. Uh, for users that, that really ha need to have results, that need to be delivered, uh, in a wide range of either research or commercial applications, uh, we're engineering systems. And what I mean by that is we're not just delivering a pile of components, uh, white box, this and that. We're delivering an engineered system that's designed to deliver the fastest, most reliable, most efficient choice in storage for HPC and big data. So that's really the uh, summary of the uh, announcement here at Cyrotex for our new Cluster Store 9000. Okay, well, thanks, Larry. I, I I wanted to ask you a little bit about SC13, and and what you'll be showing uh, in your exhibit there. Yeah, we will have uh, we'll have a pretty substantial uh, space on the on the show floor there. One of the things that we will be showing is the new Cluster Store 9000. Uh, in particular, a demonstration of uh, grid raid and how we can uh, quickly recover from failed drives. And we'll also be showing the uh, CS1500, uh, that mid-range departmental system, on the show floor. Great. So, so, so Larry, you haven't changed your, your business model, right? You're still delivering this uh, through OEMs, so customers might not necessarily ever see a, a Xyrotex logo, will they? Uh, that's true. We have uh, a range of great partners. I mentioned uh, Cray that we worked with uh, on a whole array of uh, deployments, but in particular uh, at NCSA with Blue Waters, and uh, uh, they've been one of our number one partners for sure. Well, great. So uh, uh, anything going on with uh, Luster? You guys acquired the kind of the, the assets earlier this year. Is is that work moving forward with uh, your friends at OpenSFS? Uh, great question. We are uh, continuing to work with the OpenSFS folks. Uh, you should expect to see some announcements coming from OpenSFS. I won't preempt them. <laughs> uh, but they are... Uh, uh, we're very happy to see that uh, the community released the 2.5.0 version of uh, Luster just, I think, two weeks ago. Yeah. And we're now moving on to 2.6. Uh, 2.5, we expect to be a uh, major release. Uh, the cluster store systems have been working with version 2.1 for 
uh, a couple of years now because, again, we're looking for that reliability and stability. Uh, but we will be moving forward with the CS9000 to uh, Luster 2.5, and we're very excited about the new capabilities that uh, are delivered in the latest version of Luster. We will however, take some time making sure that it meets uh, the level of quality and reliability that uh, our customers expect out of that system. So we're we're hammering on it hard even as we speak. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, kind of a wrap-up question here, Larry. You know, uh, with SC13, there's a lot of forward-looking uh, procurements coming up. I'm, I'm, do you expect you'll be in, in meetings about things like Exascale and the next steps for that kind of technology? Uh, we are engaged with uh, a wide array of uh, customers in um, a variety of markets, and certainly Exascale is top of mind for uh, the, the top class uh, customers out there in the big research centers. Uh, but beyond that, we're actually also uh, engaged with an, a wide array of um, uh, more commercial and uh, mid-range environments as well. So. Uh, we've seen an awful lot of success lately in areas like financial services, in uh, life science, in energy, oil and gas, and other uh, commercial environments, as well as the pure uh, research environments. And uh, I think what they really appreciate there is our focus on delivering that uh, sort of complete solution that lets them get up and running quickly and deliver their results reliably. Yeah, that's terrific. Well, Larry Jones, I want to thank you once again for uh, coming on the show today. Hey, Rich, it's great to talk to you as always. All right, well, we'll see you next week. Well, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on high-performance computing.